Well, D, no shortage of stuff on deck for the day. Dang, uh, can I stuff 10 pounds into a five pound bag or what? We've got Porsche Design. We've got Omega Seamasters. We've got books from Albert Aznardi. Zinn 256. Watch Tool 3 in 1 collab with Counting Com. That's how we change our straps. We've got a Rare Bird Tutor in the house, California dial. And we've got a Benris reissue draped across my 1968 Mustang model. And, of course, 1001 Watch Designs Volume 1. Let's get into it. So this episode is really about a selection of green straps from our channel partner, twostitchstraps.com. Ivan, thank you so much for your partnership. Thank you so much for your discount code. Uh, I would not have been able to get all these straps without it, so very grateful to you. And our discount code, yours and mine, is in the link, uh, the description. There's a link in the description of every video. Use that and get some money off of your stuff. If this is all about green straps, why do you have a Porsche design here? I recently did an episode about you know, going on a hunt for a, a PD and how if you end up buying one with a bad bracelet, you need to go hunt uh, bracelet parts. You don't need a bracelet. What you need is a really cool strap for it to live on while you're doing that. And this is the two stitch vintage Buffalo leather. And yes, this is the strap I dedicated to the Jarder. Dur -dur 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 -dur. But I wanted to put it on here to give you an idea of what this would look like with a uh, PVD buckle. This is powder coat. This is PVD and this beautiful brown strap with these black accents in it and the vintage two stitches, the actual two stitch of the two stitch, how it picks up the plops uh, of the dial and uh, just fits it amazingly. Now the lug width in here is 20, but it's close quarters. So you're gonna have to do some squishing of the leather to get it in there, but have no fear, obviously it gets in there and uh, you might want to use a thinner style spring bar. Not all spring bars are created equal. Sometimes they're thicker, sometimes they're thinner. And a thin one does the trick with getting this on here. And uh, the Jardur is running around the house, the apartment, without a strap on. That watch is running around naked. So we're gonna set this one down and get to the meat, the potatoes, the focus, the green straps. I started obsessing over Ivan's green straps when I picked up my Explorer. Uh, partly because it looks awesome on green, but also I needed a bunch of new straps because it has an UGG width 19 millimeters. So 20 millimeters, 20 millimeters, 20 millimeters, and this Tudor also has a 19, but it's like a 18 and a half 19. It's kind of funny how lug widths can vary a little bit, but the 19 millimeter fits perfect, and I'm excited to share that. I've got so much going on with that Explorer that I'm going to do a separate video uh, about how these different colored green straps fit on it and I want to kick this off formally with the green machine no I will never refer to this as the seaweed it's just too gorgeous uh, as you may recall if you saw the episode I picked this up from uh, Moyer Fine Jewelers in Indiana uh, when I was out there uh, hanging out with TGV and uh, Ricardo we went out for that event they had almost a year ago and really hoping they do another one this year And if I'm being honest, I <laughs> I dove right in. No, D, no puns. All right. Uh, got a fabulous price from Moyer. Uh, Derek has since loaned in watches. So grateful to you, Derek, for your partnership and your trust for that. Go to Derek if you need a new watch. Excellent AD. And this one is a star. And, of course, I love the green uh, channel colors. But if I'm being honest, I had a little bit of FOMO with this watch. I don't know that Omega is going to keep such a rarish bird in their catalog. They're not as prone to cancellation whimsy as uh, Rolex is perhaps, but I knew that you know once I got it a deal, I would regret not buying it. This is made by Two Stitch, but this is their full stitch pine green leather. And it's hard to see on the website, but it has this side coloration. Because I don't think this side coloration is as visible on the website. But look at how incredible, I don't want to bend it out of whack too bad, look how it picks up the coloration of the bezel and the loom plops. I am likely to do another strap dedication with this one, looking so good, although I think this would also look good on my moon watch. It just picks up 
the cream color. This is more of a cream color where this is more pristine white. Ba-bam. Long lead. Oh, a quick apology. If you're someone who likes to have see the watches all having the same time, I've got too many watches here to all be synced. So, sorry that they're not all set to 10-10. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll get through it together. Pine. Doesn't smell like pine, but sure does look like it. All right, what do you got next, D? We have the two-stitch green reverse leather on something of a rather rare bird. This is the Zin 256, and it's around, th I think it's 38, 40 millimeters. Editorial staff, drop in. I think it's, it's either 30 and a half or it's 40. It is perfectly sized. And this was meant to be a replacement for the uh, German Bundeswehr, the Hoyer 1550 Bund watch, which is gorgeous, if not a bit on the large side. But also Zinn had a contract to do the servicing of those uh, Hoyer Bund watches. And sometimes it would come in a Hoyer and it would leave with a Zinn because would, they would swap out the dial. And they needed a replacement for it. I don't believe this was ever put into production use by the Bundeswehr, but they made it nonetheless. It's got a fitty inside, that day date. And if I do say so, you've got that aged stitching, just like we have on the PD, uh, the Buffalo strap on the PD, that picks up the loom plops really rather well. Let's get it on wrist. And a babam number two. This reverse leather suede just feels so good. And I've got a beige one uh, of these that I use on uh, the Explorer. I'll, about, I'll be featuring that whenever I do my Explorer solo video. Love it. Ivan, I love your straps. All right, what you got next, D? Tuda. I've owned this watch several times, uh, actually twice. Uh, first time bought it sold it because I didn't think that it fit me all that well. It's 34 millimeters, but it doesn't wear traditionally big the way that Rolex models wear big. Like a, a, a Rolex date 34 millimeter wears great on me. This doesn't wear quite as large. This wears pretty much true to size, but that California dial, it just kept calling to me. And when it popped again at a great price, I nabbed it, got it out of Japan on bracelet, of course. But today I'm rocking it on the two stitch forest green. This was the first strap that I purchased expressly for that Explorer. This is also uh, 19 millimeters. And I'm probably gonna war this watch with the Explorer because this has pretty much a similar aesthetic to it. This is the Tudor Prince date. It has a conspicuous reference number, 74000. But that reference number is applicable for a number of variants. It's not the one that's specific to this unique dial so if you're hunting if you're desiring to hunt one of these um, you know that's how you have to start Tudor 74000 but they also make this exact model with a fluted bezel I'll pop in a picture of that kind of cool makes it a little more dressier this makes it a little more of an explorer ish but they also released this in 36 millimeters but as a day date and for me that day at 12 o'clock is just too busy the beauty of this California dial is being able to see the California dial. Uh, so if they would have just left the day out of that, I would have hunted that one down because 36 millimeters, I know it would fit me a little bit better. But those are rocking five to six G's right now. And I'm sorry, no, it's just not worth that much. That's a $2,500 to $3,000 max watch. At least that's what it used to be. And I know time goes on. Time marches on, prices go up, but... No, I mean, five to six Gs, you're in, you're in date just range. And so, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm giving that a thumbs down. Plus the dial is just too busy. And our third babam for the day. I have to say, looking at it in this light, and maybe it's because I've gotten used to the small-ish look of the Explorer. I feel this watch fits me great. And I dare say it almost looks larger on strap than on its bracelet. Gosh, such a weird thing. This is the first time I've had it on this strap. The first time I've had it on this strap on my wrist. And I'm loving it. Yeah, this uh, Tudor is going to be sharing this strap with the Rolly. I love the depth of the darkness of the green in this one. Clearly, oh, well, you know, forest green. <laughs> but 
pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to wear this watch with the Explorer because at a fourth of the price, dang, it's pretty cool, that California dial. Yeah, these are readily available for 2K and under. I think I got the first one for like 1.6. That was pre-pandemic though. And this one was at or around there. So very affordable option and a really neat alternative um, to an Explorer. Uh, if you want to stay in the semi-Rolex family, have a cool dial and a day complication. My wrist, 6.5 inches. I can wear this great. If you're six and three quarters and up, I don't know. You might not want to run. You know what? My, my right wrist is six and three quarters. Let me put it on there. We'll see how it looks over there. And the most useless mutation ever known in the X-Men world. Uh, oh, what's your mutation? Oh, I was born with a right wrist that's a little bit wider than my left wrist. Oh, uh, we don't have any openings in the X-Men right now. Maybe try uh, the Fantastic Four. Uh, yeah, so... Let me see here. I'm so not used to seeing a watch over here. Yeah, it looks a little bit smallish on my wrist. <laughs> Such a nut. All right, I'm pronouncing it. If you're interested in this model and you're going to hunt it, you should have a six and a half inch or a smaller wrist. Uh, okay, I could pull it off on six and three quarters, but I, I promise you on bracelet, it would look smallish on this wrist. But looking fabu times two on this strap. Last, but certainly not least, the Benrus reissue. Boy, they made this watch gigantor. This is so much larger than the, the OG, uh, the original one that I have from a Bullet, that, I don't know, it's, it's meant to be a field watch, and it needs to be on a strap that's substantial. I got this one, obviously, on the two-stitch, I'm sorry, the two-stitch, full-stitch, uh, pine green. And for the same reason, it picks up this side cream coloration, picks up the loom on the dial really rather well. I toyed with not keeping this watch, being that I love the OG, the one that was actually used in the movie. Uh, but you know what? That watch has become a bit of a garage queen, if I'm being honest. And this one is rough and tumble. There's nothing bad that's going to happen to this one. I almost sense that the crown is going, the crown stem on that vintage one is going. So I'm very, very careful when I wind it. This one, pretty much a new watch. You can also get Benrus watches that look like this, the military versions that are not the one from the movie, but actually the one in the movie, uh, Bullet, was the civilian version of the Benrus military watch. You know the civilian version because it had the red tip second hands. Meanwhile, the other Benrus military ones do not have a red tip, such as the uh, bullet one, nor this one. All right, you work your side of the street, I'll work mine. And you know what? This is the strap I'm probably gonna rock it on when I'm cruising the Mustang. As soon as winter breaks and I get to drive my Mustang again. My goodness, winter needs to let go of its chokehold of my life. Ivan, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the discount code that you've given us, uh, which afforded me the opportunity to get all of these wonderful leather straps from your shop. There's a link in the description to get our discount code. He has a bunch of other beautiful straps over there. Been buying those straps for years, and if I don't mention it, G-Money will kill me. Uh, in addition to introducing me to countycom.com, G-Money also introduced me to twostitchstraps.com. You know what? That's, what? that's what best friends are for, right? Introduce you to cool stuff. So I want to thank uh, Ivan so much for the discount code for coming along the ride. And I want to thank you for coming along as well. It's time for some Hobby Buyers Extra Credit. What do we have over here, D? We have the 1001 Watch Designs Volume 1 book by yours truly. Made this book with Skynet. And it's exactly what it says it is. There's over a thousand watch designs in this here book. A good bit of fun. And if you like watch books, if you want to support the channel, if you just think a bunch of random watch designs is cool like I do, uh, pick up a book. Uh, there's a link in the description to find your way to my website where you can purchase the book. And it's a fun way to explore AI. It's a fun way to explore watches. It's a fun way to support the channel if you'd like to do so. And we thank you for your support. Wishing you all the best in this hobby of ours. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.